is the perfect time to begin thinking about the sorts of foods that you eat, what you're spending at the grocery store, and maybe some changes you might want to make with regard to your diet and your health. There's so much awareness out there about nutrition and diet that it's prompted people to think about maybe growing some of their own food. And hey, what a great idea. Not only is it good for you, if you grow those vegetables organically, it's good for the planet as well. So I thought what we would do is take a look at some really interesting ways that you can begin to grow some of your own food. Or if you're already doing it, some things that might help make that a little easier and more effective. Okay, I could go on and on about giving you reasons why you ought to grow some of your own food because I'm a guy that just loves to grow things. But there's some real simple and practical reasons. I mean, nutrition and money expense, that gets everybody's attention. Hey, if you grow your food organically, you don't have to worry about how it was grown. I don't know about you, but I don't like to eat things that have been sprayed with synthetic pesticides. More and more chefs are using organically grown foods that are produced locally. Just makes sense, huh? You see, organic farming starts with caring for the soil. The soil needs to be nourished, which eventually leads to the nourishment of the plant, and then that provides the nourishment our bodies need. Growing some of your own fruits, vegetables, and herbs can, if grown properly, help you reduce your grocery bill. But take herbs, for instance. All you have to do is go in the grocery store and look at how much a packet of fresh cut herbs are. Well, you can buy a plant for that and produce all you can eat. I mean, it's insane. Think about this, depending on where you live, you could plant one rosemary plant. You could have fresh rosemary from that plant for years to come. I like to grow all kinds of things in my vegetable garden. For instance, take these soybeans. I got a group of kids out here to help me plant these. It was a way to help teach them about the benefits of gardening, as well as the miracle bean or the soybean. You see, the reason they call it the miracle bean is that it's heart healthy, it's cancer fighting, and it's immune boosting. It's a great whole food for us. You see, it's a complete nutrition source with significant amounts of essential amino acids as well as an abundance of unsaturated fat, minerals, and vitamins. You see, soybeans are naturally rich in protein and they're cholesterol free. So if you want to add a healthy food into your daily diet, soybeans can help you. And here's a recipe that you and your kids will go nuts over. Soy nuts, that is. If you have someone in your life who has nut allergies, well, this recipe for super soy cookies is a real answer for you. We're using a lot of soy here, and it comes together in a beautiful way. We're using the soy nut butter, using soy milk, um, actually using a little soy flour, and of course, these um, love these roasted soy nuts. We're gonna start with some uh, light brown sugar, and I've packed the light brown sugar in here. I'm using uh, one and a fourth cups of of it, so let's get it going in here. And then I'm gonna add some vegetable shortening, which you know is gonna have some soy oil in it. I'm using a half a cup of that, hydrogenated vegetable oil here, or shortening. And then we're gonna use the soy nut butter. I have three quarters of a cup of it that I'm adding here. It's amazing how similar this is to, to peanut butter, but you don't have quite uh, the caloric content in them. Now I'm gonna add three tablespoons of soy milk, this will really moisten it, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. It's a nice flavor. All right. Now I've got all those ingredients together. I'm gonna to add one egg from our girls here at the farm. Get that mixed in there together. Okay, now with the egg fully integrated in there, I'm ready to add the dry ingredients. What we're going to use here is a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Then I'm gonna use a quarter cup of soy flour. I'm 
and then three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. There we go with that. And three quarters of a, a teaspoon of salt. Now what I wanna do is slowly begin to add these dry ingredients to the wet. So as you can see, that pretty well integrates uh, the wet and the dry. Now you want a cookie sheet. Here, I will show you how to take the cookies and apply them to the sheet. What you wanna do is take about a teaspoon like this and just apply it to the cookie sheet. And I wanna show you a little trick on the soy nuts. So what you wanna do is you wanna take these and just push them into the dough. And you wanna make sure they're, they're pretty well buried because what happens in the cooking process is that they'll actually get pushed out and, and, and they'll burn if they sit at the top. There's a dozen of them ready to go into the oven. Now you wanna preheat the oven to 375 degrees and you wanna bake them for only about eight to 10 minutes until they're brown. Watch them closely. You're gonna love the flavor. These are so tasty, they'll make a bulldog break his chain. I'm the kind of guy that likes to grow just about anything, but one of the things that I love to grow is a perennial vegetable. Now I grow three different varieties of asparagus here. I grow one called Atlas, which is a great variety. If you're thinking about growing it, think about it. Another one called Purple Passion. When it comes up, the stalks are really purple. They're really gorgeous. And the third one, it's called UC 157. It was developed by the University of California and they just named it 157. Now what I have right here is UC 157 and this is late in winter. And what I wanna show you is look at the size of the stalks of these guys. Now back in the spring, we harvested lots of asparagus here. The tips came up and it's the lovely tender tip that you eat. But what you wanna do is you wanna let this foliage grow up and you want the foliage to persist throughout the entire growing season because this ferny foliage through photosynthesis recharges the roots and gives you those gorgeous big juicy stalks that come up in the spring that are so delicious. This time of year, what I like to do is come back before they start shooting and I cut them off at about an inch above the ground, the stalks, just like this. Just come along and take them all off because I want to show you how I planted them. Let me get some of these out of the way. If you look here, I've created a, a mound that runs 100 feet this direction. And what I did is I planted these asparagus crowns about every two feet apart and I offset them. So when I planted these, I planted two-year-old crowns. And when you order them from a mail order source, which I did, they'll come in a box and they'll look like spiders and they're, they're two years old and you plant them. The first year, I didn't harvest anything. They put up this ferny foliage, I left it all alone. Second year, I harvested about 25% of the stalks that came up. And then in the third year, I harvested a lot. And since we're organic here, what I like to do in the way of feeding these plants is I take some of our animal manure and what I do is I just dump it out in certain places like that. I know that doesn't look very appetizing and I spread it around evenly around the crowns like this. And what will happen is as the winter rains continue, this manure will dissolve and all of those nutrients and micronutrients will settle in around the asparagus. And in a couple of months, we'll start seeing those lovely little shoots come out. Now here's a recipe using two delicious favorites straight from the garden, asparagus and rosemary. Check it out.
You know, spinach is pretty amazing. It's full of all sorts of things like protein, fiber, and some bodybuilding compounds. And speaking of bodybuilding, what about Popeye? I'm Popeye the Sweat Whaler. That guy had some arms on him, didn't he? Now you wouldn't know it to look at it, but a spinach leaf has a lot of vitamins in it as well, like A and C, and minerals such as iron. You know, in the 1930s, spinach producers credited Popeye, the cartoon, for a 33% increase in spinach consumption. How's that for marketing? Hey, when I was a kid, it made me want to eat spinach. I actually love the stuff, and boy, do I have a great recipe for you today. The name of it is spinach tomato pasta. So we're gonna start with the sauce, and we're gonna take about a tablespoon of olive oil, the bottom of the skillet, by the way, which is on medium heat, and just coating the entire bottom here, just using a wooden spoon. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one shallot, just slice it thinly. And we're gonna just cook this until it becomes clear. But uh, while that cooks, we're gonna add a fourth of a teaspoon of some red pepper flakes. to Just give it a little punch, all right? So you can see here that we're just about ready for the next step, and that is to add the spinach. And what we're gonna use here is about five ounces of, or four cups of spinach. Just want to put that fresh spinach in there like that. Of course, this cooks down, as you know. And then to this, we're going to add a fourth of a cup of low-sodium chicken broth. Now you can see the spinach is all cooked down. We're ready for the next three ingredients. We're going to use a fourth a cup of half and half equally distribute that. And then we're going to use some Romano cheese. And uh, what we have here is about a fourth of a cup, and I'm gonna use about three quarters of this. We're gonna hold off with just a little bit to finish out the recipe. And then half a teaspoon of black pepper. All right, I'm gonna stir all this together. Oh, I wish you could smell this, it's mm, wonderful. Cheese is all melting nicely. This makes a great sauce. And you're gonna cook this, again, over medium heat for about three minutes. You wanna make sure that all of these flavors meld together. Okay, you can see it's thickened now and it's just about ready. So what we're gonna do is take this off the stove. And I'm gonna turn this off. And now it's just a matter of assembling this with the other ingredients. What I have here is some whole wheat pasta. And what I've done is taken a 13 ounce bag cooked it, what you end up with are about four cups of pasta. You can see I've used rotini pasta, you could use penne pasta, just your choice. All right, so this is cooled and it's ready now to add these final ingredients. What I have here is a full cup of little grape tomatoes, one that we grow here that I love so much is one called Juliet. These have been sliced in half, so we're gonna add those. Look at that beautiful color. I'm gonna make sure that's all blended together. And I'm gonna add the sauce, the spinach. And you wanna distribute this evenly. Now this is enough pasta to serve four. You can serve it at room temperature, or you can actually heat it up a bit. And now I'm gonna finish it off with just that bit of Romano cheese. We have that remaining fourth of cheese. And then you wanna add one tablespoon of fresh chopped flat leaf Italian parsley. Easiest herb in the world to grow. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? It's ready to serve. You can salt and pepper to taste. sweet peas. They're a wonderful flower and they can have such, well, an incredible aroma. This way of growing sweet peas, anyone can have them because I like growing them in a container like this. Now sweet peas will grow up to about four to five feet tall. They're a vine and what I'm going to do here is I filled up this uh, container which is about a 22 inch container 
in diameter here, and I'm just gonna push the little plant out of the cell pack like that. You wanna try to get as much soil as you can. Look at those white roots, how, how fresh and healthy those look. That's a very good sign. All right, now you gotta have something for them to grow on, so what I like to use are some of these bamboo sticks, and I just take these, and I'll put one of them near each of the plants and create a triangle like this. And then I just take some twine. I keep this garden twine around and just cut off a length of garden twine. And then I come to the top here. I'm just gonna tie this together like this. And what's great about growing on the vertical, growing up, is you don't have to have a lot of space to garden. This container can go on a patio or a terrace, even a balcony. You get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So there we have it. We have a sweet pea teepee. here is an edamame succotash. It's very simple. You're going to start with two cups of little cherry tomatoes cut in half, two cups of edamame. You can see the color is really beautiful. One cup of whole corn. I love it fresh right off the cob. And a fourth a cup of chopped red onion. Really gives it a lot of lift. I'm going to take some cayenne pepper, quarter of a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon of salt, then one teaspoon of cumin, and finish it off with two cloves or two teaspoons of minced garlic. There we go. Now all I'm gonna do is fold this together. Look at these beautiful colors. Then over medium heat, I'm gonna take a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil, which by the way is made from soybeans. A couple of tablespoons is all you need there. And I'm gonna let this get really nice and warm. And then I'm gonna take the succotash and begin to saute it. So here we go, the oil is just about right. You can see there's a little sizzle. Now what I'm going to do is, once all of the succotash is in here, I'm just going to simply keep this over the heat and stir it frequently for, oh, about two to three minutes. You want it thoroughly heated. You want all those lovely flavors to meld together. I think we all 
tend to associate making changes in our lives with the new year, but actually making changes is a good thing any day, like today. And it makes a lot of sense to improve your nutrition and think about where your food comes from and grow some of it. I'll leave you with this quote from Virginia Woolf. It's one that I've always admired. She said, one cannot think well, love well, or sleep well until one has dined well. Until next time, good eating and good health. You know, there's something, of, I'm just thinking about, yeah, coming over here with this bowl, maybe. <clears throat> All right. Asparagus plants, so you can find them at a feed and seed store, dormant like that. And as soon as it begins to warm up, you don't have to water them in right now, but as soon as these things begin to, as soon as it begins to warm up, you'll start seeing these little green finger-like sprouts coming up and that's going to be your first sign that your asparagus is doing well it's going to be successful if you're enjoying hearing this airplane fly over while i'm planting asparagus call the national aviation 